Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and many of you liked the previous app update video. I brought that back and quite a few people enjoyed it. So I thought I'd make another since there's been some significant changes here. Now, the first thing is actually on iPad. Apple has actually brought Apple music classical to iPad finally. So you'll see here, you can actually download it in the app store and it's now available. This is actually the first time I'm opening it, but you'll see, you've got it now full screen with all of your different menus on the left, just like Apple music with your artists, tracks, recordings, composers, and more go into your composers and you'll see, you can add or browse your favorite composers just like you can on the iPhone, but now it's all available here on iPad iPad as well, if you prefer to use it here. So it's great to see them just bring this app across to this device to go along with Apple music classical. If you've never tried Apple music, you can get up to six months free. If you have a PS five and you've never tried it, it's available to new subscribers. And if you go on the PlayStation five, you can sign up to Apple music there and get up to six months free. This may be available to some people that subscribed in the past that haven't in a while, but this is a pretty good offer if you've never tried it out and you want to see what it's all about. Now, as far as iMessage, we had a lot of really great news this week. RCS is coming to iMessage in 2024, according to Apple. We'll talk more about that in depth in the weekend follow-up video, but basically it's going to be a regular standard, not the standard or the way Google is using it where it's already encrypted. They'll have to update that in the actual standard. Apple's actually been working to get it standardized. So encryption is there and more, but it looks like iMessage will finally gain RCS, which takes the place of MMS and SMS. That way you can send high quality images to one another, see statuses and more. Now also to go along with iMessage, nothing this week that makes the nothing phone announced that they're going to bring iMessage to Android. Now they're doing this in a roundabout way where you actually have to sign up remotely in basically a remote server with your iCloud account, which isn't a great thing, but they actually are going to try it out and bring iMessage onto their platform. So that's something you'll be able to use. If you've always wanted to try iMessage that will be available. You could sign up for an iCloud account and use it that way. But that's something I would love to see opened up in the sense of maybe Apple bringing it as their own app to Android and maybe even charging a monthly fee. Either way, most people in the United States use iMessage. I understand WhatsApp is used around the world more, and we'll talk about some updates with that in just a moment. Also to go along with apps, Mark Gurman confirmed that next year, Apple's working on bringing it side loading to comply with laws in the European union to the iPhone. Now this may be EU only and not available anywhere else, but that would mean you could install apps outside the app store. This is something you can do on the Mac or pretty much any other platform and you can choose to do it or not. But if you want to on the Mac, it's fairly secure as long as you know the developer. So you'd be able to install it maybe from a third party app store or just from a website. So since iOS is sort of built on Mac OS or the foundation there, it should be pretty easy to implement, but they'll of course want to regulate that more. Apple also announced this week, it's app store award finalists. So this is where they pick the app of the year every year. And if we scroll down, this is from Apple's newsroom. You can see the finalists in different categories. So you'll see all trails, Duolingo and flighty game of the year finalists with Afterplace, Honkai Star Rail, Vampire Survivors, then different creative apps such as Concepts, DaVinci Resolve, and Makeup. I'm sure I'm saying that improperly. And then iPad game of the year and much more. So they've announced these. I'm sure we'll get the winners soon, but it's great to see. We should have some great apps here and let me know if you agree with what they've selected here as well. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. TikTok this week added the ability to save music to your favorite music app. So if you go into TikTok and maybe search for an artist, you can now add it to your music app. And depending on what you have, it could be Apple music or Spotify or others. You can then add it to your music app, allow it to access your library, and then you can actually see the track there. So that's something that's great. If you want to save songs that are within different videos, telegram this week announced that it would be bringing its app to vision OS. This is on the Apple vision pro, and you can see it on their telegram channel where they introduce what it looks like. So it gives you an idea of what it would look like in Apple vision pro where you would have the app sort of floating in the background, and then you could interact with it that way with stickers and more. So let me know if you're actually excited about Apple vision pro. I'm not sure what I think about it just yet. Now, as far as WhatsApp, WhatsApp is actually bringing out a new chat feature this week that allows users within a group to start a voice call quietly. So maybe you're in a group call together and you want to contact someone else within that group. You won't now call everyone when you try to contact them. Instead, it will be quietly in the background to one individual that you're actually trying to connect with. So that's something they've updated. It will no longer ring everyone in the group.
Threads gets an update this week with a couple different things. So if you're still using threads, if we go into it, threads is now adding tags for posts and they'll have some different things with trending topics in regions such as Australia. That's been updated. And one big thing is if you don't want to use threads anymore, you can now delete your threads account without touching your Instagram account. So if you want to do that, go into your threads app, go into your profile, tap on the two line menu in the upper right, then go to your account under account go down to deactivate or delete profile. And then you can see it here where you could deactivate it or delete it altogether. And it only applies to threads. As you can see here, your Instagram account will not be deleted or deactivated. So that's great that they've updated it with that. Instagram got a pretty big update with some test features as well. It was updated with a new interface for posting images and stories. So that's been changed as well as having 20 new filters and the ability to use segment, anything AI to create custom stickers, very similar to the stick you would create in photos itself, where you can just pull something out of a photo. Additionally, there are 10 new English text to speech voices to choose from, which will allow you to use that in Instagram when it's reading content. Reels is also testing new options to help with scaling, cropping, and more. So depending on what you're using, you may have some new options here. Now, as far as games, one of the AAA titles we've been waiting for, for the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max is resident evil four. This is actually one of the first major AAA games that will be available and you'll be able to play it on December 20th, according to the app store. So this is something they showed at the iPhone announcement and it will be available. Then Microsoft released a new preview this week of a new app coming soon called window app. If we scroll down, you'll see, it says you can log in and control your different windows computers. And this is actually available, not just for a PC, but also Mac, iOS, iPad, and even web browsers. So you can actually control, you'll see, it says you can use it with multiple monitors, custom display resolutions and more. So this is maybe the most optimized remote viewing app we've seen, and it's directly from Microsoft. So hopefully that's available very soon. If you have that need. Also, if you're someone like me that uses final cut pro, there'll be a new version of this for Mac and iPad soon with new features. So if we scroll down here, you'll see that Apple actually announced this would be coming later this year. So there's new organization tools and it's not just for Mac, but also iPad as well, optimizations for Apple Silicon. So we could see even faster exporting of H.264 or HEVC and additional things such as voiceover capabilities and other things as well. So I'm looking forward to this. I was hoping there would be even a bigger update. We've been waiting for things for iPad. I still can't fully use it on my iPad to edit every video though. And so that's it for all of the major app updates this week. Let me know if there's any other apps you'd like to see, maybe recommended games or anything else. Let me know in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.